Hi, I'm Tamara Lackey, and on this episode of Redefine Show for Adorama TV, we speak with Brian Matiash, and he shares how he saved his creative soul by leaving corporate marketing, and some amazing advice he has for image makers all over the world who want to separate themselves from the rest of the pack. Check it out. Hi, Tamara. How are you? I'm great. You're great? You're not sick in any way? Not at all. I feel great. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. For being in a conference with a thousand other people, sure. What's yeah. going wrong? There's no Petri dishes here. Not at all. Hey, so you and I met, and I remember this vividly. I'm not sure if you do. You and I met when I was at Google, Google. doing a yeah, talk. Yeah, you talked. Yep. I remember. God, I thought I was going to like totally I was thinking you. about it earlier. Aww. See? Um, Due diligence. With Lori Rubin. Yep. And, but you were working at Google at the time. Correct. What were you doing there? I was the kind of global evangelist for the photos products, for Google Photos. Okay. So I got to, um, Google has these photos products, you know, they started by buying Nick software. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was building out the, uh, I guess, the group of photographers who are, you know, really, really exemplary, kind of like, a, kind of like an ambassador program, but not really an mm -hmm. ambassador program. Mm -hmm. And so I got to meet and work with some amazing people and spread the kind of Google Photos seed. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. How long were you doing that? How long were you at Google all together? Two years. Two years. Mm -hmm. And you got all that amazing free food. I gained so much weight. <laughs> I'm not joking. I gained about 55 pounds. Whoa. Mm -hmm. In two years? In the first year, because after the first year, we relocated to Portland, and I worked remotely. That okay, first that year, helped? it helped a little bit. But then, no, I, then I lost rapidly. Yeah, a lot. yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, because well, it's good and it's everywhere and it's free. It's and it's really good. Yeah. And like, on at the end of every hall, there are like micro kitchens with snacks and stuff. So and <laughs> drinks and everything. It's awesome and terrible all at the same time. It is. It's a it's a playland. Yeah. yeah. So what did you do when you left Google? When I left Google, I actually started working with Sony. That's when I started kind of branching out into um, not working full time for a company, but kind of contracting and helping to create content and fashion a social media strategy for photography, specifically with Sony Alpha, which is their digital imaging line. Okay, and you're doing, you do a lot of landscape work. Yeah, I mean, the landscape and kind like of gorgeous, travel. Like a lot of gorgeous landscape right. work, yeah. Well, I mean, living in the Pacific Northwest, it's Doesn't suck. not hard. No. Yeah, yeah, you literally just put your camera down and hit the button. Well, not exactly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, but it is, it's 30 minutes from where I lived. I was at these waterfalls that were like magical. So yeah, yeah it was very, very fun. How, when you say was, are you not doing as much shooting anymore? I no, you I moved to Nebraska. Yeah, moved to Nebraska because I, you know, I wanted to go back to completely working for myself uh, as a kind of like an educator, mm -hmm. content creator. And in Portland, uh, you know, it's getting more and more expensive. So to cut our cost of living down, we decided to, my wife and I decided to... Nicolzi. Nicolzi, who was also on this show, mm -hmm. um, to move to Nebraska, which is where she's from. So we got to be closer to family while also dramatically reducing our cost of living. Which if you're, you Smart. know, so, a solo kind of business, in this case, not, we're both, we have our own individual businesses, but you have to kind of consider that stuff. Well, so my husband and I lived in San Francisco when... Oh. Yeah, when we both decided to do our own thing. So I'd come out of management consulting. We both did in different ways. Um, and long story short, we kind of looked at uh, what it would take to be able to start our businesses from scratch and totally different businesses and see how long we could make it. Worst case scenario. And in San Francisco at the time, given what we'd saved to date, we are like, we could go for three years. That's pretty enticing. Yep. Yep. Then we pulled out a map and looked at Chapel Hill, North Carolina, where we moved to yep. and live now today. Um, and I'm like, we can go nine years there. It's amazing. That changed the whole kind of, like, it's the, you save money, da, 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 but when you actually put it in a term like that, like, I could spend nine years trying to nail down the career I want there versus here, and quite like where I am there, too. Just, it's a different thing. I still love San Francisco and, Absolutely. and the whole West Coast. But yeah, it is, it is really striking as an entrepreneur looking at it from that perspective. Yeah, I think that... Um, because I'm from New York City, and I, I do think that for there is a certain time of a period in, in a, 
I guess, a young adult's life where it's, you know, living in the city really on a shoestring budget in a 150 square foot apartment hustling is that, that works. But there is a, you know, I, I also believe that there's a certain point where unless you kind of make a, this quantum leap of success, eventually you have to start swallowing some real, you know, reality pills. Yeah. And those are the worst pills. Th they, they're, they're, those are when you put on like, you know, your big boy, big girl pants and, and you're you like, joke. I need to, oh well, yeah, you need to, you need to make decisions. Yeah. And that was like with us with Portland where, uh, we loved it there. It was such a awesome vibe, mm -hmm. great food, great photography, a lot of great people. But if I really wanted to, um, do what I need to do to put the time in to continue to, the, to grow my business. Yeah. Uh, we were going to relocate. So, you know, never in my entire life did I ever think I'd have a Nebraska driver's license, but I do. And uh, it's, it's great. It get, I have the time that I need to start building uh, my business back up mm -hmm. because I, I did. I, I had my business and then I went back to working for, in this case, Wacom, mm -hmm. which is, you know, they make pen tablets. Yeah, yeah. Because there is this allure to the safety of a full-time. I was still working in the industry, right. but I had a 401k, I had benefits, yeah. I had a salary. But at the same time, the flip side, because there is no you know, perfect solution, is my creativity was completely stifled. Whenever you work for a company and you're at the whim of a marketing department yeah. or you know, some VP who knows nothing about the industry, but that their, it's their decision, you have to execute. And yeah. so creatively, um, I, I decided to, it was time for me, if I, need, if I wanted to not have my soul die in a ditch, uh, I needed to make Get some- kicked around? Yeah, and so I, it was, I left, and so far it's been a really kind of, it's been very enriching. Yeah. And it's a bit, because I made, we made the kind of harder upfront decision of relocating, uh, I'm able to, at a, a really nice pace, regrow the business. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So so being in the business and being surrounded by so many photographers and networking, you have mm -hmm. a huge network in the photography industry. What would you say are the things that you see overall? Like if someone's coming into this right now, like, you know what, skip this, do this. Like what would be some of those pieces of advice you'd give to people? Um, for me, so I've, I genuinely believe that with social media, it's, it's of course a blessing and a curse. Like most, you know, things it's a are. It's a blurs. I like that. Trademark. <laughs> blurs, TM. Dumb, yeah. You get a nickel. Um, the, with social media, you get this, um, this it, it really democratizes your ability to share. You don't yeah. need to work with a publisher to get your work in a magazine. You, you're your own publisher. Right. But at the same time, you have that like signal to noise ratio where you have um, just so many people. So I, I wrote about this recently on my blog where I'm getting like Inst I'm bored of Instagram mm. not because um, there are a lot of bad photos the complete opposite there are so many amazing photos you know s same you know Milky Way shot same beautiful like fox in the dewy mist morning I, I, don't, get, I don't know that I've seen that shot. Oh, That's I'll show amazing. you. There are plenty. Lots of foxes in the dewy mist. There are. There's, I follow. I'm gonna search it. Hashtag well, fox in the mist. I'll send you. I'll send okay. you some people. Okay. It's amazing. Okay. But I get desensitized to it. It's like, okay, great, another beautiful sunset uh, shot. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. my recommendation, and this is what I've always fashioned my own kind of content strategy on, is what I call experiential photography. And for me, it's not just about. Um, you know, getting to the place and knowing how to take the photo, it's very important that I am able to share the experience mm -hmm. behind it, um, why I took the photo, just the, the, the mental or creative blocks that went to it. Yeah, a lot of your photographs are behind the, like literally behind the camera you have set up on a tripod. Yeah, I like, pe yeah. because there's this, I think with um, hobbyist photographers who see more established photographers, mm -hmm. they, I think they uh, romanticize us as like, oh, you know, just these um, amazing, you go out and just like, oh, pff, done, perfect, magic, done. Give me my check now. Yeah, exactly, pay me. Yeah. It's not, it's the complete opposite. I mean, the amount of failed shots, failed shoots, failed everything. The intense lack of glamour. Oh, man, it is. It's so, it's, that's not, that's just, it is missed. You're right, there is a misperception out there about that. Absolutely. And so what I would tell people is, of course, at the same time, especially if you're starting, um, there's very little these days that would separate a 
really skilled photographer from a new one in terms of getting the sim a similar shot. Yeah. In most cases, if you're at the right place at the right time, and now this is not to diminish that, mm -hmm. but you could, mo most it, it's a lot easier for more people to create amazing photos, which is great. So how do you differentiate yourself? Yeah. Because differentiation is, is success. Yep. And so it's a good pull quote right there. It, it's true. Yeah. I mean, it, I, you and I could take the same exact photo. Great. So who who wins? Yeah. Well, whoever can kind of um, people are are vying for attention. Yeah. Like, you know, I want you to remember my name. How do I do that? It's not just a photo because you have the same photo. All right, so let me tell you the story. Let me tell you what went into it. And I'm not talking about necessarily, well, you know, it's this camera and this lens. It's, it's the mindset, yeah. um, the, the, the hurdles. And so that's what I would recommend for anyone. I mean, new novice or pro to um, build your, I, I hate even calling it a brand, but one thing I believe that- Identity. Identity, identity is how, who are you as the photographer? I would much rather, um, I, I remember, you know, with, with Matt Klaskowski, where he was saying, uh, in his case, to paraphrase, he was saying um, he would much rather have someone compliment him on um, learning something new versus being a good photographer, mm -hmm. you know, on his ability to educate. And for me, I would rather, much rather someone remember me by the story that I have to share than the photo. Yeah, yeah. That's to me, is where the, the legacy is made. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. So when you're saying you're, uh, wait, you're gonna give me a thing that told people to skip. So you're gonna say what to do, tell the stories, lock down your identity, separate yourself. Mm -hmm. What do you see a lot of people doing that you're like, just skip that? Like, oh, um, I just, I think everyone's just trying to, uh, th this idea of first mover advantage of trying to just get stuff out there mm. as quickly as possible, Con just like put out all this content without really, um, there's no cohesion in the in the, kind of like their stories or the body of works just like a bunch of different things if i if i go to someone's say instagram profile or their blog and i and it looks like 15 different photographers contributed 15 different types of yeah 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 i don't know who this person is so um rather than i would say kind of really skip the this this mania of just oversharing because you're going to get lost in the static yeah. um focus on really refining you know, and then I'm approaching this less, I mean, I guess partly creative, creatively, but more professionally, if, if that's what people are interested in. Right. Um, but in order to define or grow, spend more time on, on figuring out what it is you want to contribute. Because yeah. the whole... The, and do it more consistently. Do it more consistently. Yeah. You don't have to do it all. Consistency doesn't necessarily mean very often. It just, you can do it once a week or once a month as long as it's consistent. But make sure that there is some sort of a thread a common thread that goes from one share to another. I mean, the whole, the whole kind of point, the life cycle of a photo of, of creation is to share. I don't know anyone who creates to kind of keep it to themselves. Yeah, yeah. And so if you're going to do that, put some intent to it. You know, make sure that there's some sort of intent. Well, let me understand what, why you created it. Don't just like, oh, here's another pretty sunset. That, it just, it, there are too many just kind of beautiful, I, I call them like empty calorie shots. <laughs> just like sugar free. I like that. And and it's just that's what it is. Like great, yeah. that's a great photo, beautiful, but why should I care? Yeah. And so you have to be able to answer you have to be able to provide that answer or at least allow the viewer to figure that answer out. Awesome. All right, where can people go to find out more about you? Uh just my my website's matiash.com, so that's Spell that. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Actually it's funny cuz again uh, with Matt Matt's show where he has mattk.com, I went and tried to get brianm.com, so you I get put it? Well, I put a bit in, Okay. but it's Matias, M-A-T-I-A-S-H.com. All right, yeah, you should go after the Brian. I'm trying, <laughs> yeah, I'm trying, I'm trying. A thousand bucks I bid. Okay, so. good luck. Thanks. Thank you so much, Brian, for that very well-worded explanation of why you want to separate yourself out from other image makers. Check us out here next time on Adorama TV, and do not forget you can subscribe and also see everything else that Adorama TV has to offer.